But why do we want to take a little bit more elaborate route? Is because we want, number one, choose the right surrogate model. We want to set up early stopping to bring more speed in the Bayesian search. And we want to customize the validation strategy for it to be more effective when it finds those minima points. And obviously, we want to have a finer control over each iteration. Because each iteration, which is trying to kind of find us our, our best, uh, best value for the objective function, can be understood for us to evaluate how our various feature spaces are coming together. Okay. So need for speed, convergence, and final control. That's why we're going to do that process. And one last point is that if we build it in this direction, we obviously can have an extendable framework that you can use for your pipelines for various machine learning projects through and through. Okay. So let's see some of the key implementation code sections. Number one is the machine learning model. So in this particular case, I'm making an assumption that we are taking an XDB which is, what is XGB regressor? XG boost regressor. And I've taken a very large estimator and some random state, okay? So that is my ML model. I've not done any tuning on this model whatsoever. I'm also next choosing my scoring function, okay? My, in my particular case, I'm going to be choosing a mean squirer. And I don't want squiring to really be impacting, so it's really... There's no squiring, it's it's uh, it's mean absolute error in this particular case because the squared is false. And this partial is going to cover my uh, my metric for it to be now adaptable as a scoring function within the Bayesian search. That is why we are wrapping it up in the partial function. Okay. Next, I have to set it up, set up the overall hyperparameter search space, wh which are the things I want to search. Okay. So for that, obviously, I have a few things. For instance, I want to have my learning rate within a certain range. So I'm defining that as I want you to, I want the search to uh, find values between 0 0.01 and 1.0, and I want it to be as a uniform distribution. Okay. Next, max depth is going to be an integer that I can have between one and ten. Subsample rate can be between 0.1 and 1.0. This is very specific to XGBoost. And then reg of alpha. So the regressions alpha, again, specific to XGBoost, I'm giving in a score of 0 to 50.0. These are all layer numbers, which means they can be, they are decimal numbers. Minimum child weight. What sort of weight do I want for each of the child? We don't actually know these numbers. We have just taken it from the rule of thumb that we have essentially seen of what works in many projects. So where did I get this 50, 20, all that numbers from? Based on the rule of thumb of what usually works as a range for me. So that is how I have defined them. Very good. So that is kind of my search space. I'm going to be searching and I'm going to be searching using the mean squirer, which is the function that I want to give me the final objective values. And I'm going to search for the model XGB regressor. Okay. And yes, just to highlight that in XGBoost, there are a lot more hyperparameters. So what I have chosen is these five, which I which I believe is important at a minimum for you to operate with XGBs. Okay. Next. Fourth step is I want to set up my validation strategy. This is very, very important. And if we get this wrong, whatever search we do, it won't really be effective. So let's get this right. We want to set up the key fold with my view on the seven splits. Now, people will do 10 splits and 15 splits. That is all up to you based on your research. Just know that the more your splits are, the more you're going to be bounded with variance issues. Okay. So the more smaller your, uh, your splits are from a fold perspective, then you're going to have less of a variance, but then your means will be low, which means you might not have efficiently found uh, the differentiating factors. I have chosen submit value of 7, 10 is acceptable, 12 is acceptable, and then you play around with it. And I also must definitely choose my early stopping. My early stopping is decided, or is going to decide how fast it leaves the search space and comes over. 
not only to finally leaving the search space but also to keep trying new new things it, it has to exit the internal loop so that is what is the need for early stopping so for this i have to set up a particular set of code where i am particularly saying for my experiments and it's greater than or equal to 25 when i have run enough experiments which means i've run up to 25 experiments 25 different iterations i'm trying to see the percentile 20 top 20 percentile values i'm using as my minimum acceptable score okay so i'm using a percentile score to do the cutoff i obviously will see whether my test score for that experiment is below my minimum cutoff if so then i can say look you're having still you're unsatisfactory because my minimum acceptable score based on the 20 20 percentile top 20 percentile is much larger okay and i would return the mean of those validation strategy scores so this is kind of a loop you this is kind of the code you may have as part of the loop and i will show you later uh, as the full code of how this this uh, kind of evolves And one thing to note here is your validation strategy can be different from model build up validation strategy. So this validation strategy I've chosen as K fold of seven need not necessarily be the same K fold that I used when I chose my models. Remember when we did the development and we chose the model, we would have run, let us say K fold, you would have run for various other uh, k fold methods you could have done a cascaded k fold like how i discussed in the other master class or whatever your strategy is that is okay but that need not necessarily be the same as the k fold which we have here because this k fold is going inside your bayesian search and is driving your bayesian search solutions so keep that in mind then we have an aggressive early stopping so here I've said tw less than 20 percentile means I'm going to stop the search. Finally, you tie everything together with an objective function. Okay, so your objective function is going to drive many things. So objective function is def of objective function, objective factory, model x, y, space, cv, scoring, validation equal to 2. So I've written this objective function. Let's let's go through this. Let's uh, let's go through what we are doing. So we are fundamentally having a list for all the validation strategy scores. After that, we are going in, taking the x and y's. Basically, validation strategy will give me the splits. I'm taking the training samples fall within the fold. fitting it to the ML model with the number of early stopping rounds given to it. I'm making a prediction from the ML model. And obviously I'm see the scoring function I've used, which is going to give me my mean squared error. And I'm appending it to the validation strategy scores. I'm going to continue doing this to build up this validation strategy scores. And here, is where I'm going to be inserting the early stopping code. Where after some time, I might have enough values in this validation strategy of various levels of my model performance that I can decide what is top 20 percentile. Okay. So when the top 20 percentile is no more being met, every time it comes in, then I'm actually going to be exiting as part of my early stopping. All right. So when I exit this loop, what happens? It obviously will return whatever earlier was the validation strategy scores and that is what is going to go out rather than it trying 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 and adding pathetic bad values in so what have we essentially done loop through the data fit the ml model and score it terminate if early stopping criteria is met the objective function is going to basically return a couple of things one is it returns my mean validation scores and the objective function itself. All right. So far, so good. We have an objective function which takes the ML model. So like this, it goes through the data, fits it, terminates when things are out. 
what about fine tuning of each iteration how can we do that for that for us to fine tune each time the bayesian optimization goes in uh, for each of its iteration what we need to do is we have to define a callback function okay so here i have defined a callback function which is basically getting the results of each of the parameter that it is tried so i am saying look this was the point i have and this is the score i have so each of the parameter set it tried and each of the score it it has got thus i have now fine tuned for each iteration initializing the priors this is one of the things i mentioned earlier is that try to initialize them with with some smart way don't just give it a random value how do we do that we will basically be running a very small random search solution so what i have here is a dummy minimize this is a function that is given by sklearn which internally is running a very small set of uh, small iterations number of random search okay for my given objective function within my dimension space and it runs it only for 50 steps okay so thus it initializes my r solutions with some values for my hyperparameters which would make some sense rather than just absolutely out of blue all right so you've seen the eight steps so far the ninth step is really tying them all together with the bayesian code i mean putting the minimize together so here we are going to be using gp minimize which is gaussian processor minimize function from the guys bayesian package what we are saying is my function is my objective function which i earlier defined and my starting point is my random search solution that i have in hand and obviously i have uh, multi dimension x x and y for that and then my search you i want to sir kind of like really look into is my space which is the variable which has all those different uh, tree parameters that i want you to try and my acquisition function is i'm using something called as gp underscore hedge okay gp hedge is a very interesting acquisition function because it is a function which will automatically try out multiple things of acquisition functions based on some probabilistic me measure and try to move between let us say a uh, probabilistic improvement was as an upper confidence bound which own works better probabilistically it'll it'll rank them and then use that so it is a it is a method that was written by sklearn team and it works quite well okay the number of calls i wanted to do for the minimization overall exercise is 100 steps okay and every time it calls each step i wanted to call this callback where we have already seen we know how to persist information or use that information for printing purposes okay so that ties the whole thing together so what have we done here we have taken the gaussian process surrogate method gp minimize and we are using the gp hedge method which will auto pick between lower confidence bound upper confidence bound expected improvement and probability improvement based on a probability of gain at each iteration okay so thus there is a nine step process nine step pieces rather i would say for us to put this together 